Hello everyone, it is Caitlin, and today we are making two cases from the Warp Woman's Guide, a handkerchief case and a card case. I think we shall start with the pocket handkerchief case, um, which in my copy of the Warp Woman's Guide is found on page 209. It's right here, and it does have a plate. It's plate 24, figure 5. And it's just this one right here. So it kind of shows you what it looks like. And it says, This is usually made of silk and is lined with muslin or sarnay, having perfume between the silk and the lining. And when cut, put into ladies' drawers with the handkerchiefs laid in, gives them an agreeable scent. It consists of either one or two pockets, generally the latter, so that in folding up, the case is merely beveled over. The case is about four nails wide and, if intended for double pockets, nine nails and a half long, each pocket being a full four nails and allowing a half a nail for turning in and a nail space between them. Cut out the lining and the two pieces of the fine muslin the same size and lay them as follows. First the silk, then next one piece of muslin, then sprinkle the scent freely all over it, after which place the other piece of muslin and then the lining, pin them so evenly, run them around the edges. Quilt it or not according to pleasure. The quilting keeps the scent in place and the edges are turned in up to two nails on each side and the whole bound with ribbon. Sometimes initials of the owner are marked on the outside. For an suitable perfume, see receipt number 14. So, let's go make this up. I have some blue silk here, which I thought would be lovely. I pulled out all my silk that I don't have a full dress length of and I kind of had fun like figuring out what I ought what I had because I don't always remember what I have but yes yeah, so I have this and then I have some china silk for lining which I thought would work so first of all we're going to need um, a rectangle not four nails by nine and a half nails which essentially turns out to be nine inches by 21 and like a third so and I'm going to do two of them in blue, so I'm going to do the um, top and the bottom of blue, and then do the pockets in this. I think is what I want. This has already been ripped, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and do this nine inches. So there is that. And I really need four pockets. I may cut some muslin because this is kind of see-through. I don't really want to see the scent part in between there. I'm thinking about cutting some muslin and just kind of interlining that just because I have a thin silk, which you wouldn't have to do if you were using a taffeta. Take one of these silk layers and then one of these. And now it says to put on a sort of scent. It says to go to receipt number 14, but receipt 14 is not a perfume. It is, in fact, how to get stains out of scarlet cloth, which I think don't think is going to help us. So I looked through and found the perfumes. So what I found is on um, page 227, there's a scent bag to lay in drawers, and there's some potpourri, um, which it also uses the word perfume for potpourri, so um, it seems like they're, that's what they're kind of meaning, as opposed to like the liquid perfume that we would think, because it uses the terms interchangeably within the text. So I kind of looked at it, and I didn't feel like really going out to purchase anything, so I made a little bit of potpourri. So I had lots of little lavender flowers, I had um, corn flowers, and then I had um, cloves. I basically went through my spice drawer, put some cinnamon in there, put some, um, kind of looking at what they were adding. So. They were adding orange flowers, um, roses, which I didn't have. Um, they added some thyme. They also had rosemary. I don't have any rosemary on hand. Um, and I thought I had some mint in the garden, but it all died. So don't have that either. So I was kind of using the quicker um, sort of potpourri, where it says orange flowers, um, clove flower, clove gilly flowers, damask roses, uh, lemon thyme, marjam bay leaves, handfuls of rosemary, myrtle, mint, lavender, rind of a lemon, and some cloves. And I used most of that and then I added in the cornflowers and um, took away what I didn't have. 
So instead of, I guess instead of clove gillyflowers, I was using cornflowers. And then I just didn't add the roses. This is what I got. So it does smell really nice though. So I think we're just going to sprinkle this in. This is what it says to do. I don't know like how much. doesn't really give any directions that way. So I'm assuming in the center more than the edges since we're going to be stitching that up. It does smell like really nice. So kind of fall like with the cinnamon and the cloves but it's like that floral scent too because of the cornflowers and the uh, lavender. So that looks like that's plenty. And then I'm going to take another one of these which again I'm doing inner lining because I have really thin silk. If you're reproducing this in an actual silk that's decently stiff, I wouldn't bother with inner lining. It says to pin it quite real well. I assume that's to keep all the scent in. So the longer the stitch is the less likely any of the scent's gonna um, break through. So there is one of them done. Um, yeah, so it looks really cute. My lines are not quite even, but it's anchored just okay. Very now you to see this. I will say it was really hard to sew around the clothes. So if I were to do this again, what I'd probably end up doing is um, crush the clothes a little bit. Like not quite powder form, but you know, mortar pestle, pound them up a little bit. And now that we have this quilted, the extra clip for you out of the way. I'm not entirely sure why there are two pieces here, a lining and another piece. I'm guessing if you wanted this to actually be the color of the lining, so this and this matched. Um, I didn't have enough of this fabric to do so, so dealing with what I got here. stitch that down. Um, probably just going to do a running stitch. Not put a terrible amount of effort into it. So just teeny tiny little stitches as is usual. And I will do that for both sides. Right, it is the next day and so I think it's about time to go ahead and put the rest of this ribbon on. When I walked in today actually the whole room smells just like the the perfume we made. So it's really strong, but it's really pleasant smelling. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stitch that up. Just a quick running stitch, I think. And this project will be complete. I don't have any handkerchiefs to put in it yet, so we'll just have to put it away. Maybe get some of my 1860s handkerchiefs to kind of keep pictures of it or something. But yeah, nice fun project. Really fun project. And it looks really nice too. It is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like a single handkerchief. I guess it's supposed to sit in the drawer. It holds like all your handkerchiefs. So I could probably get like eight in here maybe if I just fold them into quarters. But one here, here, and here, and then on the other side as well. And we have a finished handkerchief case. I think if I were to do this again, I would definitely crush up the cloves instead of using whole cloves. I wouldn't use powder cloves. I would just crush them up just a little bit because you can definitely fill them and it was very difficult to um, stitch around them. <laughs> so yeah, if I were to do it again, crush up clothes, but other than that, very happy with how it turned out and it smells lovely. The entire, the entire room smells like this now, which isn't a bad thing. So put that to the side, we can go to work on our card case. And so I made these little beaded covers for it. To me, the front, and then I have Sarah's initials for the back. And uh, the workman's guide has it being slightly bigger, but the size my cards are I, basically four inches by two and a half inches is what I made this, and it fits the cards I have. So this is what we're going to use. So what I think we're going to do 
is basically follow the Warp Woman's Guide's directions for making a card case. So essentially it wants a, a cover and a lining. We're just going to put this over top. And also pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and cut all those out. And I chose a yellow silk because I have the little yellow rose on the front of the card case. I went back and forth between pink and yellow, but since I had the pink here, I wanted something a little bit different. That's why it's always a good idea to keep your silk scraps, even the tiny little pieces, because they come in handy for things like this. And it does say to leave a little bit of a gap here in the um, card case direction, so probably only maybe about that ish gap. Like Cut this in half so I have two pieces that are exactly the same size. Basically, basically it's like making a needle case. It's just we're going to put cards in it instead of needles. And we're making pockets. Can't forget about the pockets. I could use this as a singular pocket and then just bind the edges. We can do that. I was kind of hoping to, I was kind of hoping to double it over and make it kind of a thicker pocket, but I can make this work. I have some white silk ribbon we can bind with. I think that'll work nicely. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and iron all these edges in to be exactly the size, um, at least the size of this. And that's going to, um, then I'm going to start stitching it together. It's a really quick, simple project. It's basically just like making a needle case. It's just, yeah, we're going to make, po we're putting pockets to it. And the, works, the Work Woman's Guide does suggest using ribbon um, on the edges of the pockets to, um, almost like a hinge. I think they refer to it as a hinge. And it opens the pocket up more where you can fit more cards in. Um, I tried that doing, I tried doing that on a prototype and um, I can't figure out a way to make it look nice. Now it could be seamstress error, um, but it did not look good. So I think I'm going to stick with plain pockets for mine. I'm looking at some pocket books and beaded cases from like 1750 all the way up to 1830. And I'm, seeing, I'm not seeing them with the hinges anyway, so um, we're going to go with just plain pockets. Make it a little bit easier on me. Alright, so quickly I thought we would read the directions from the Workwoman's Guide on how to make a card case. Um, so there's a plate. It is plate 24, figure 14. So it's this one right here, which y'all can see that. Um, so we're basically making the exact same thing. We're just putting a beaded cover on it and then not doing the um, hinges because that wasn't working out for me. So this is a very similar in shape to the handkerchief case which we just made, excepting that four little gores or hinges are put there at the sides of the pockets to enable it to open wider and contain more cards. Okay, we're not doing that part. This hinge should be creased in two after being put in and when creased well will always set properly. They are made of Morocco silk, paper, rich satin, or velvet. A piece of flannel or dimmit may be put in between the outside and the lining. They are sometimes embroider embroidered or braided around the edge with the initials or, or crest put in the middle. A cord or twist is sometimes put around the edge to give a finish. And you could very well like just do the case itself embroidered, like embroider on the silk. Um, I think that's probably more common. I did my beading on perforated paper, but from what I'm seeing on originals, it's much more common to have it beaded or embroidered on the silk itself. So, I have the little case here, and I am working on now um, just encasing the raw edge there in a little bit of silk ribbon. So I just found it in blue. I didn't have any in yellow, but I figured blue would be good because we uh, we have um, blue in the in the beading. So I thought it would match really well, and I had it on hand. So we'll go ahead and put this in. Making sure it's caught on the back. All right, now we are going to attach the card pieces. So here's the front of the. Here's the front of it. So this this side is going to fit basically just like that. So there would be a little bit of silk right down the middle to kind of provide a fold line which is what the engraving shows, and it'll look like that when it's done, essentially. So we're going to attach all these layers now. 
So what I'm doing is just putting my needle up and down, kind of, again, a running stick, stitch basically. So I'm using the perforated paper as stitch lines, which is helping me get my stitches very even. And on this top one, I'm making sure not to sew through the pocket, because obviously the pocket wouldn't work if I stitched right through that. On all the other sides, I'm going to need to stitch through the pocket, though. And this is what it's going to look like on the back, and so this is going to cover up that part very nicely, so you won't see the stitches on that side. You will see stitches along the edge, but that's okay. Alright, finished card case. There's the little front there. And the back with the initials. So I have my little cards here. These are um, for Sarah. So she says Mrs. William H. Wharton. As far as I know, there are no original cards from Sarah left. And so um, kind of make it up. I went through what was typical of the period and came up with that. I also have some other cards um, that are basically the same thing, but they also say Eagle Island Plantation on the bottom, although usually period cards did not actually have the address or anything on it, it just had the name. But then on the back is like my personal um, modern information as a living historian, so if anyone needs personal cards, I have those as well. So it's going to go in there quite nicely and they just fold right over. And I have a little finished card case. And here we are, here are both cases. I found a random little handkerchief to kind of stick in the handkerchief case real quick. Um, but it's been a couple weeks and the stencil is still very strong. And so any handkerchiefs that get kept in are going to smell really nice when I take them out to use them. And of course a little card case, which turned out super adorable. So I was a little concerned at first with the fact there isn't like a tie or anything to keep the um, the card case closed, but and they fit in there because we did not do the little hinge thing, they fit in there pretty tightly and they're not falling out or anything and also the original directions didn't have um, any type of tie on there so I'm not too, too terribly concerned about that. But yeah, um, both of these projects then, I I always like working through the Work Woman's Guide projects. I think they're kind of, you know, it's interesting to follow those directions and come up with something that's useful that's not a gown. I think it's kind of interesting to go through things that aren't necessarily dresses. But thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in the next video.